Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot leg. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to replace an ignition coil pickup sensor on an 88 Dodge Dakota. This is Cody. He is my assistant helper for today. Say, say hi to the folks. How's it going? All right. Okay guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is remove your air cleaner assembly there. We're going to unscrew that piece you just saw in view right there. And then we can just reach and kind of pull that guy right off. And there may be a tube attached to the bomb as well. You're just going to kind of pull him off and he'll come right off there. And then we're going to locate our problematic area. I'm going to come over here and you'll see it's where he's reaching there. That's where your distributor cap is. Let's see if I can get a nice shot on that. There we go. Right there's a distributor cap. Whoa, Cody, we are just moving right along. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. That guy right there, and basically we gotta remove this guy, and to do so, you can see right there where my finger's at, there's a little clip. It's basically like one of those little locking clips where you pop them off and then you put them back on and tighten them up, and there's one there and one on the opposite side as well. And here's our other clip right back in there, you can see in there. And basically, you'll just take your finger and see if I can, just, I popped them off right there and we can see it's just hanging off there. So remove both those clips and then we'll be able to remove your distributor cap and I'll show you that here, what that looks like in just a second. So now we're just disconnecting that other clip there. We're gonna undo them and my friend here is going to remove the distributor cap. As we can see here, it just kind of comes right off and then our internal parts will be exposed what we're gonna be replacing here. Okay guys, so after we remove that distributor cap, we can see our rotor button and basically we're just going to remove that piece right there. Cody, you can go ahead and just get that bad boy off there. And um, next, our rotor, what's this thing called again? Ignition pickup coil sensor. Okay, yeah. so now our ignition pickup coil sensor is exposed. <laughs> and we can go ahead and remove him. And basically, we just have two Phillips head screws we've got to remove, and we're gonna find one sitting right down here. There we go, that's one of them. You're just gonna to wanna to get like a little stubby screwdriver in there. Um, and then the other one, you'll definitely want a stubby screwdriver because it's right up there against the firewall. So I'll show you what that guy looks like here in just a second, and we'll get those screws out. Okay guys, now the next Phillips head screw we've got here is going to be sitting right around here and you can see we have two Phillips head screws fastened into that place right there and you can see that smaller black one, that's the one you're going to want to remove and also we have that slightly larger silver like Phillips head screw and that's, it's actually not going to be there, it's not going to look like it, it's going to look identical to the other two screws. Now, you need to make sure that you grab the one that looks like the right screw. You want to make sure you get the one closest to the firewall or furthest away from me from my finger there. So those are the two screws you need to take out. Remember all three are going to look the same, but only the two I described are you going to want to remove and then we will be able to remove our ignition coil pickup sensor. So now my friend here is removing the other two screws and we'll be able to pull out this piece here and hopefully we'll get the new one in and the car will be running just like new. And basically that's all you do is just kind of pick up on that wire. It's a three terminal wire there and you just kind of unplug that. Now is that a squeeze and unplug or is it just a pull? Just pull it out. Pull it out? Okay. Cool. And then yeah, now uh, here in just a second I'll show you the installation for this piece. Okay guys, now we have our new sensor here. We're going to go ahead and set that bad boy in. Go ahead and put them in there. And basically, you're explaining something to me Cody. What What's going on with that wire you've got? This wire, there's a little groove in the side of the distributor right okay. here that you just got to press it down into so that it doesn't get in the way of the cap. And and there see. you go. Where's our wire? To, uh, well, sorry. the wire is down on the side of the distributor right now. Okay, and so basically, yeah, you're just going to set your wire. You can see how the, the rubber fit in there. just kind of sets down in there. And then make sure to re-plug up your ignition coil pickup sensor guy right here. And our connector, the female connector, where can we find that piece right there? Just plugs in. Just in over there. Right here. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug that in and then we'll get everything back together. Uh, as far as installing everything, it's pretty much uh, reverse. We'll go ahead and just show you there just to make sure you know exactly what you're doing. And then we'll get the car started. Hopefully it's gonna be running real good. We got the Phillips head screw we're gonna start. We'll start both the screws. And once you've got both of your Phillips head screws about hand tight, go ahead and take your Phillips head screwdriver and tighten them in there tight, not too tight. You don't want to strip those threads. It would be hard to get out if you do that. So after that, we'll show you here putting the cap back on. The next thing we have to do is put the rotor button back in. Where's our rotor button, guys? There it is. So we're going to go ahead and just you insert. You see there's a little, like, notch in there. It mm -hmm. lines up with the notch on the distributor. Oh, that's an important note to make note of. What does this red wire go to? Don't worry about uh, it. Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> Alright, so let's get this button back in. <laughs> that looks swell. Now let's get that cap. Sure you cap. The cap also has notches in it. Notch. notch. Some more notch. So you can only put it in one way. If it yeah, if it's not going in right, don't force it in. Just try and find that perfect little thing like we're doing right here. You see it kind of went into place there. And now we're gonna grab those little snappers. And we're gonna snap it. It's gonna snap right on. <laughs> Making you stubborn. With the other one. We heard the other one snap on on the other side, and then it's okay. And to finish film, this is gonna take like two seconds. It's gonna look like you were like a master mechanic. Stupid wire out of the way. <laughs> there it goes. And there you go. It's as simple as that. And the next thing we we'll want to do is make sure we go ahead and get that air cleaner back on. Is there anything in between that? No. Nope. No. Okay. So go ahead and put our nice little air cleaner. We'll make sure that air going inside your engine is nice and clean. Plug that hose back in. Oh yeah, we got a hose over here, and I don't think I showed it when we're taking it off. So. Yeah, just got this hose, and you should have already done that by now. You see, we got the hose coming right off there. It's gonna go into that end port area, All right there. So, oh, <laughs> sometimes we can just uh, remove it completely. There you go. So, once you've got all that put back on, we'll go ahead and start up and see how she runs. So, that pretty much concludes today's project. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all my new videos which publish Mondays and Fridays at 9am Pacific Time, 10am Mountain Time, 11am Central Time, 12pm Eastern Time and I will see you then.